Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another tutorial. It's going to be a graphite tutorial with a bit of black colour pencil. I'm going to be going through a technique that I am absolutely loving lately and I'm going to be showing you how to draw an eagle head like building up feathers, how to like build up feathers using quite a simple technique and process. So that is what we're doing today and so let's get straight into it. If you want to see the real time version of this complete with voiceover then it is available over on my Patreon series. I did it as part of a tutorial series where I also drew a fox and a frog. So the materials that I'm using for this are a few graphite pencils by Faber-Castell and that is a B and 4B. I'm also using the Polychromos black pencil, a mechanical pencil by Faber-Castell with a 2B lead in it. And I'm also using a Tombow mono eraser as well as a few blending stumps to blend. So let's start straight with that eye and I'm going in with the black color pencil and blocking in the pupil and all of the darkest areas around the eye. So I'm just looking at that reference image and I identifying the darkest parts and by darkest parts I mean the really really near black areas and I'm doing that with the black colored pencil. I'm also using it to lightly get in any shading in the eyes before I go in with my graphite pencils and start to add a base tone layer for the actual iris. I then go up and pull up some highlights looking at the patterns in the iris with the Tombow mono eraser so just use that to lightly kind of bring up some highlights and then you can blend over them with the blending stump to add more shadow or use the actual graphite pencils to add more texture as well. So I love the black color pencils with graphite to get such a dark look to it. It really gives it depth because sometimes it's hard to get nice black rich tones that you want with graphite pencils. So that's why I'm using a black color pencil for this. I'm working now on the feathers and I'm using the graphite pencil to block in some of the base sort of shapes and layers of the feathers. So I'm looking at the reference again, looking at those individual random shapes for the feathers. But even though the feathers might have different sorts of shapes, they are layered in a specific way. So it's really important to pay attention to the way they're layered and the direction they're kind of going in. As you can see, they're curving around the face and the head and it is curving in a way that is really important for the anatomy of the bird. So I am using blending stumps to actually blend out these layers of graphite and what it does is it gives a nice base and a mid-tone value over all of the feathers and then that way because you've got a mid-toned value you can then decide whether you need to darken up certain areas for the shadows and then brighten up certain areas with the Tombow Mono Eraser and so it's really good to just have that mid-tone value and then you can use those two things to add the contrast by darkening up some of the shadows as you can see me do and lightening up some of the areas. But I do always like to go in with those graphite pencils and the blending stem to get in the general structure of the feathers. And to do this, it is just about being observant and really paying attention to all of the detail in the reference because it's not just there for no reason, like the way the shadows are and the sort of shapes of the feathers, they're all so important and you just need to kind of focus on what you can see in your reference. Don't try and just draw what you think you can see, actually look at that reference and identify the shapes. So as you can see, I'm just laying down a basic layer of graphite and blending that with the blending stump just to give me that mid-tone value to work from. I then maybe need to darken it up so I add even more graphite and just keep layering and layering. And so I'm also getting in now more of the detail. I've got that smooth sort of base in, but you need to get that feathered texture in and that's where I go in with the black pencil and the darker graphite to really look at the direction as you can see. I'm kind of doing it like I do fur, but with fur you obviously have more of those lines, whereas with feathers it's kind of bigger clumps and bigger shapes. But it's a similar sort of idea, they're not completely different to each other. And so you can use the actual Tombow Mono Eraser as well to get in the shapes of the feathers because it's nice to lift up that graphite, add the layers on top to give, give it a three dimensional look. And then you can glaze the actual blending stump over it if you need to. You don't just have to use that eraser to create highlights, you can also use it to erase areas for certain shapes. With the beak I'm going in and I'm looking at the structure as you can see I want to straight away know where the main structure is. I want to get in that sort of foundation base for the actual beak. So I just block in those slightly darker areas with the 4B pencil and for the lighter areas I go in with the B grade pencil. 
but I blend over the whole thing because like I said, I want a mid-tone value over everywhere. And then I can go in, as you see me do now, working on the actual details and the shadows first. And then at the very end, I go in and work on the highlights. So I always do the highlights right at the end because you don't want to add highlights and then blend with blending stumps and add darker shadows. Otherwise, you're just going to get some of that graphite mixed onto your highlights and then you'd have to pull them up again. So I always leave the highlights as the last thing to do because then they are nicely preserved and you won't go over them by accident. But it's really nice also to use to create little texture. As you can see, I'm using it now to create little texture, little tiny bits of feathers. There's some really short feathers. It's important to look to see how the feathers change. They're not all really big and long. There's some little tiny ones as well, right by the front, by the beak. So it's important to look. And around that area as well, they were all kind of going in different directions. So it's important to keep looking at the direction as you go to different areas of the animal. So I'm repeating the same thing now for part of the neck and the body. I added in that base tone going in with those graphite pencils. I use the B grade graphite pencil where it's slightly lighter and then I just use the 4B for the darker areas because I find that the softer the graphite the it pencils are, the kind of grainier it looks and the more they wear down. So I try to only use the grade that I need rather than just using the soft pencil for everything or trying to press really hard on the B grade pencil for the darker values. But you don't need to use loads of different types of graphite pencils. Just pick a few, but I really do recommend having this black colored pencil. It has been such a game changer with this because of the fact that you can get those black tones without it being really 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 shiny and kind of off-puttingly shiny I really like the way they work and they will go over a bit of the graphite obviously not if you burnish loads of graphite onto the paper it'll be hard to go in with the black over the top but if you just add layers and blend them out and then try and add this colored pencil it works really nicely and you can also blend out this polychromos black it does work really well with the blending stumps to blend it out to get that smooth look and I don't know if it would work as well with like prismacolor black or Karen dash black because they're wax based and this is oil based but with this one it works so nice and I would recommend this brand as well because of the fact that they are harder so they hold their point better so you won't have to keep sharpening them I don't think this technique would work nowhere near as well with other color pencil brands so like you can see, I'm adding that black and I'm going in and I'm blending over it. I just wanted to darken up that whole area. So I just glaze over a whole layer of graphite very messily and just blend over that. And just building up more and more of these shadowed tones. And it is all about looking at the reference image because every bird is going to have different shaped feathers, different length feathers. They're going to layer in a different way depending on the positioning of the bird. So it is important to study your reference image and actually just focus on the bird you're drawing. Don't try and do it as you think you're, you've done it. If you're drawing lots of birds, don't try and do it the same way each time because that bird might not have those types of feathers that you're used to drawing. So as you can see, now I'm going in with that with that eraser and I'm using it to get the shapes of the, th the feathers. I'm not gonna want them all this bright, but I'm not doing it just as a kind of erasing tool. I'm using it to actually create the shapes and the layering of those feathers. And then I'm planning on going in with the blending stump anyway to go and darken some of them up. But it is all about lifting some of that graphite in those areas and then darkening it up so there is a subtle difference between the feather color and the actual darker sort of shadows in the background like beneath all of the layers of feathers. So now I'm going in between those feathers, darkening up some of the shadows, just to make it look really three dimensional. It's important to look at the, the shadows between the feathers because that will give us an idea of how they layer. And it's also really important to look at how the layer of feathers that you're working on affects the layer of feathers underneath it. Does it cast a shadow on those feathers? And this, these subtle details is what is going to make your feathers look so much more realistic looking where are those shadows where are they is really really important again I'm going in now with that eraser just to pull up now the highlights but I go over it with the actual blending stump because they aren't like the brightest highlights nowhere near as bright as the highlights by the beaks but you might just need to lighten it up a bit so those little highlights stand out 
I'm also adding some of the details around the actual face of the bird around the outside so there's little flyaway bits of feathers going into the background especially by that beak you can see there's little bits and under the beak it's important to look at how kind of stray bits of feathers go around the face as well but now I'm just adding those finishing details so it's important as well to spend those extra few hours looking at your image and seeing is there anything you need to change check the contrast i really do recommend as a final check take a photo of your drawing compare it to your reference image and see if there's anything that really really stands out that you need to change you don't need to necessarily make it look exactly like the animal you're drawing especially if it's not like a, a commission and you're trying to make it look like that portrait for someone or like that animal like if it's a pet portrait if you're just using it for reference then it doesn't have to look exactly like what you're doing but you want to make it look realistic if that's what you're going for so compare it to see if there's any like serious things that you've missed like big things like any sort of shadows or if your anatomy is a bit off but definitely try and make sure your anatomy is fine before you go in and do all of the shading. I'm just adding some nice little details over the top with the graphite pencil, keeping it nice and sharp. But that is basically it for this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, I have got so many tutorial series available on my Patreon, all in real time, all with voiceover for such a small amount per month. I think I've got over 100 tutorials on there now that you can check out and access right now once you become a patron. So definitely check that out. Anyway guys, that is it for this video. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you are new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on my future tutorials. But that is it from me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.